Okay, so this presentation is going to be what to consider when you're planning a website. So there are a few things uh, and a few steps. I've outlined here a nine step plan, uh, kind of planning guide for you. Um, and these steps, I've put them in the order of um, if a certain step is a certain number, you can of course do it earlier, but latest at that point, you should be considering that particular thing. And I think it's gonna make sense for you when I go over these steps. So let's just get straight to it. Um, hold on, here we go. Okay, so this is something I always um, recommend people do regardless of what they're trying, what kind of design deliverable they're trying to create. In this case, a website um, design or marketing deliverable. So I encourage you to first think about what's the entire purpose of this website? What are the business goals that you're after? So this kind of is, it's important for you to understand if you are building a blog, if you're building a shop front, what is the thing, what is the, uh, the ultimate, uh, your kind of outcome and the goal that you're trying to go after that. And it's good to have in mind and maybe even write it on the wall somewhere so that you understand. A lot of these kind of goals that to, be, to achieve the specific goal, oftentimes there might be specific features that you need to think about, specific designs that, or design patterns or something like that, that you wanna uh, implement on your website. So it's good to be aware from the beginning um, and this is also helping you sort of uh, plan the entire website when the goal is clear later down the line. If there's any question for you, should I do this or should I do that? You can always go back to your goal and think about, is this gonna support the goal or not? So ideally your website is not gonna be a graveyard of random stuff. In, uh, instead, it's sort of active live place that everything that you put in there strategically is gonna move you toward that one goal or you can have, of course, multiple goals, but the goals that you've defined. The next thing is to list your products and services. So there's a very practical reason for this. Uh, if you're doing digital products, how are you gonna sell them? Are you gonna sell them through this website? If so, what kind of, you know, do you need server space? What kind of um, services and features do you need on your website to support uh, selling the product. If it's services, do you need like um, some kind of feature to uh, book, you know, book appointments with you or calendar or so forth. Uh, it also, again, it helps you to assess the technology and just wrap your head around to make sure that anything you put on your website is again supporting for you to sell these products and services. Next one, content. What kind of content are you going to put on your website? And this is, there's a fancy word, content strategy. Um, and there's a, you know, an entire industry around developing content strategy and so forth. But at least what you wanna do here is to list the, times of, uh, the types of content that you want to uh, host on your website. You wanna be able to understand the amount, how much of each type of content, and frequency, how often are you able to update your website, or how often are you gonna be releasing this type of content. For example, if you are doing a video blog and you have a lot of video content that you wanna host, again, at some point you might wanna ask yourself, am I going to need um, some sort of server space somewhere? Um, Amazon Web Server or something like that, where I host all the, the heavier, you know, um, video material is heavy, can be gigabytes sometimes, depending on how you compress that, but um, you don't wanna slow down your website and have heavy video content, for instance, hosted on this within your website. So that again, kind of like understanding the type of content that your website needs to accommodate, is affecting the, or has an impact to the technology that you're probably gonna be choosing. Of course, um, later down the line, we're gonna look at different platform types. Some platform types are just natively better in hosting certain type of content. For example, WordPress is the king of blogs. So if blog is your primary, uh, you know, written blogs, your primary thing that you're gonna be the primary type of content, it's really important to you that all the advanced blogging features are supported then you might be thinking about that platform. We'll get to that a little bit later, but at this point, I just want you to start uh, getting your head around the different types of content that your website would have. 
The other thing that I want to still emphasize is the, the frequency. So I, I toss it in there because it's part of the more strategical thinking. How often are you going to be able to update your website? This is because, um, first of all, Google SEO likes that uh, things are updated frequently. So you want to always have like a fresh content. Uh, of course, if you have visitors that frequently come back to your website, it's more likely that they keep coming back often if every time when they come, there's something new and fun for them to find out. If someone comes back a few times and nothing ever changes, it might be that they're not going to be uh, coming back frequently anymore. Okay, also platform. So this is just what we talked about a little bit with the content. Um, here's a listing of, of 10 very commonly used platforms for creating websites. Uh, I've highlighted with little pink dot next to the, on the left side of the ones that I've used for building websites. Um, so let's go a little bit into each of these and I'll uh, explain what all of them does and if I have experience with them. So WordPress originally started as a blogging platform. You can still start a free blog on WordPress um, and if let's say that you don't have any money to invest into uh, building a website and maybe you're not looking into starting your business immediately but you just want to start getting content out there then maybe you start a wordpress a free wordpress blog and start building um, sort of audience that way uh, wordpress also provides this uh, platform framework that you can download from wordpress.org and then host that on in any kind of you know, a web host uh, and build a website with that platform framework. What I personally do, I personally have a WordPress website. I've had multiple ones and, and the current for my dailycreative.io is a WordPress website. I was kind of lazy when I started it and I also got hosting. So I have the business plan from WordPress. Um, I know it's sort of unpopular uh, among web developers because it, it has limitations to what you can do. Not all plugins, for instance, or, or all, there are some like fancy tools that are third party tools that don't work on the WordPress business plan and the, the WordPress hosted website. But personally, I've actually been very happy with it. Only thing is that it is expensive, but it's also unbelievably reliable. I've never had any issues with speed or downtime or anything like that. Everything is always uh, working seamlessly. Second one on the list is Squarespace. So Squarespace is one of the most popular uh, kind of web, website builders today. Um, I actually happen to have also a Squarespace website. My personal portfolio, einaholzma.com, is on Squarespace right now. And my uh, reason for getting a Squarespace at the time was the ease of use. I wanted to get my portfolio updated. It needed to look clean and I wanted it up really quickly. I opted in for Squarespace. I have the, it's about $100 a year plan, um, which is not too bad. It's like, you know, eight, $9 a month or something like that. But the thing is with that, uh, that for instance, that cheapest plan does not come with a web store. So if you wanted to have a storefront in it, from Squarespace, the price would immediately go up. So the, the kind of um, plan from Squarespace where you want to, um, where you can do kind of more than just host content, it's more kind of uh, more business functionality on it, it's pretty expensive. I, I can't remember on top of my head because I didn't purchase that at the time. Um, but at the same time, Squarespace is super versatile. Uh, I've had it for years. Um, so I know that since I got it, it has evolved to uh, more business friendly, more versatile. Back in the day, they still said that if you want to have a blog, you want to have uh, WordPress, but I'm not even sure if that's true anymore these days. Anyways, Squarespace is really, really simple and really, really beautiful. Like they have wonderful templates. They're all clearly designed by really good designers. So it's easy to get up and running. Uh, third one is Kajabi. So I also have Kajabi for my branding done right program is hosted in Kajabi. Uh, it is kind of all in platform where you can do lots of different things. You can host a course there. You can have a membership space. You can, you know, I, I have sales pages through Kajabi and all that stuff. Um, it's expensive though. So you want to make sure if you use that, that you budgeted for it. It's, um, I think it's 
I, I got it through a discount code at, back in the day, but I think it's still like about hundred dollars a month. Kartra is a, is similar to Kajabi. I've never used it. I know a lot of people who do use it. It's a little bit more affordable, but still closer to hundred dollars a month. Wix is another kind of easy, what you see is what you get uh, type of website builder. So uh, a drag and drop type of a website builder. I've used it a long time ago at the time. I chose not to use it in the end. I built a website with it and I didn't publish it. I didn't use it because it seemed that there was not enough integrations, plugins, and all kinds of fancy treats that you might need for a business at the time. But remember, bear in mind, this one was, this was years ago. I know businesses who use Wix. Uh, I've been surprised to hear a few even larger businesses using Wix. I'm still a um, little doubtful about that, uh, but if, if, it's, uh, if it's simplicity of use that you're looking for and you're not really married to the idea that you need to have a lot of different functionalities, features, and integrations uh, to different business systems, then Wix might work for you. Shopify, I have not used, but I've heard a lot about it. Shopify is great if you have physical products because they have the stock units and the stock keeping uh, stuff in there. So it helps you to kind of manage your, um, your physical product business. Um, you can also build a regular website with it. It's not just a shop front. Um, and I've heard a lot of good things about it. I have no idea what it costs or anything, but if you have physical products, it's something that you might want to look into. Show it is um, a fairly recent addition to this list. It is, uh, I think, hands down, it creates the most beautiful websites that I've seen recently. It's fairly expensive. Uh, as a designer, I was really, when I first saw some of the websites that were created with it, I was kind of tempted to just go with it because they were so beautiful. Um, and I've heard reviews that it's really easy to use. I haven't jumped the ship yet. Uh, just because it is pricey. Uh, and the other thing is that um, the good thing about this is that I hear that it integrates really well with the WordPress blog blogging features. So if, if blogging is important to you and you want all those advanced blogging features, um, show it will integrate uh, WordPress blog, blog features and, and work well with that. Weebly. I don't know much about it. I've heard that it's a easy to use, sort of quick, quick, get your website up quickly. I include it in the list because I've seen it in a lot of comparison lists, like um, there's these drag and drop builders uh, reviews, and I've seen, uh, seen it on those lists. I'm assuming it's worth looking into. I've never uh, used it, but you might want to look into it that as well. Webflow, I've used it. Um, from all of these, it is more, I don't know what the right word is. It's more like a, um, you ha it's, it's drag and drop, but you still have to understand, at least back in the day when I use it, it's been a few years, or not a few, but it's been a couple of years. It, you have to understand a little bit about HTML and CSS, just not necessarily because you don't actually use the code, but you have to understand what are paddings and margins and so forth to be able to adjust the right thing. Um, and what I've used it for, uh, when I was working in a branding agency in San Francisco is the, us designers, after we designed a website, we would build it in Webflow because it, the interface is so similar to like Adobe software that it's really easy. If you use Adobe software, you'll get to, you get the hang of Webflow real quick. And what we used it for, it was to create the front end uh, of the website and then we would um, export the code and give it to actual developers who would uh, get some, of course they couldn't use it as is, but there were parts of it that they could use to make their life easier. Webflow is, I really, really like the tool. If you don't have any experience with uh, building or, or, or creating, developing websites, and you don't really necessarily want to get involved with that side of things, it might not be the right tool for you. Also, I don't know how well it integrates with, you know, different funnels and funnel systems, uh, CRMs and things like that. Um, and the last one is lead pages, which I actually uh, bought a, the subscription a while back just for landing pages. I liked it because it integrates so easily with um, email systems like Active Campaign is what I use, and it e integrates super easily. It was um, like just you can create that landing page and hook it up with your email service really quickly. Um, you you can do it with um, 
DV as well. But since I have lead page and I haven't, I have so many landing pages there right now that I just haven't <laughs> taken the time to recreate all of those in DV yet. So I have it here. I know recently they, uh, recently they actually, but. Uh, um, created a service where you can uh, build an entire website on lead pages, not just uh, landing pages. There's a little bit of, um, oh, and I just wanna add that lead pages is about somewhere, it depends the kind of um, um, subscription that you get, but it's around between 50 and $100 a month, something like that. So that was a little bit about different platforms and how uh, how those are used and where where all of those might work for you. So that's a good list if you want to start thinking about where you would build your website to look in at least a few of those to review and find information for yourself. Okay, so after you figure out platform, it's time to think about hosting. Uh, those go hand in hand. You might want to look at hosting hosting first and then choose platform, or you might choose a platform and then find a hosting that supports that. So. Some people say that when you get a web, uh, like a WordPress website, for instance, there might be difficulties of getting a hosting that supports it, that there have been some issues that some hosting services are making your website slower or whatnot. Again, I don't, I've never had that issue with, since I've had mine hosted directly with WordPress. Uh, here's a list of hosts, uh, hosting services that you can uh, look into if there's something to start uh, start your research from. I put a little su uh, star next to SiteGround. I did some research around this topic and hands down most people that I talked with, that I trust, and also a lot of blog posts that I read about recommend SiteGround. They say it's a, a superb customer service, really great hosting, uh, quick speeds and everything, really integrates well with WordPress if that's your jam. Uh, and then I put other ones also like the Liquid Web um, and WP Engine that were good second and third options in many of the um, reviews and recommendations that I read. Uh, Bluehost and HostGator, I've circled them with this gray box. They actually come from the same owner. I can't remember the name of the company that owns them, but it's a massive hosting company, uh, conglomerate. And I read a lot of actually reviews for and against, um, especially with Bluehost. It really was 50-50. I heard a lot of, or I read a lot of reviews where they said, don't get this. It's horrible. After this big company purchased them, they became really bad. But at the same time, I read a lot of um, really good reviews where they said that it's still like they've had, they've had it for years and it's always been good and they didn't see any change after this larger company purchased them. Um, to my understanding, these two are options where you can find really affordable hosting plans if, if that's something that you need to find. I've added GoDaddy and DreamHost at the bottom here because I know a lot of people who use them. I myself before have used GoDaddy. It was fine. I don't have, and when I was building websites for customers, I also used GoDaddy, but bear in mind, this was like 10 years ago. Um, and I never had any problems. I know a lot of people who would ne wouldn't you know, touch a GoDaddy with a stick <laughs> today. But again, I've never had any issues. I've had, I haven't had like unbelievably amazing experiences either, but you know, it was okay. Good hosting, not the cheapest, but probably not the most expensive either. Was working well for, for what I needed it for. Okay, so moving on. URL, so when you have some of those things that I mentioned, your purpose and goals, your product services, you have listed your content, you've figured out the platform you wanna use, um, you wanna, uh, you've figured out hosting, it's time to think about the URL. So, of course, you can think about it earlier <laughs> if you want, but typically, when you're purchasing the hosting, or at some point, you're gonna have to kind of point your name servers and your hosting and your platform to say, hey, this is where it all leads. And URL is going to be the address of your website. So for instance, I currently have three um, URLs that are registered for, for myself. One of them is my aynahorsma.com, uh, which is my personal portfolio. Uh, second one is dailycreative.io. Uh, and then third one is the designlead.com. The designlead.com, I don't have anything in there right now. It just parked it for potential future use. Um, and this is something that you can get creative if you want to. There are a few rules of thumb, like 
typically the shorter you can have it is better but bear in mind that many of the URLs have already been taken so uh, .com is hands down the most popular but for instance when I want a daily creative dailycreative.com was already taken and when I went to look check it out it was something totally random nothing to do with what I do so I decided I'll still go with daily creative I just get a different ending so I got IO which is fairly popular in like design and tech related things I put a little link here for wikipedia.org slash wiki slash list of internet top top level domains go check that list if you're interested so that will give you a full listing of all the endings that you can have so like i said i couldn't get dailycreative.com so i got .io but i could have gotten like .academy or .design or you know something like that so a few years back they released a bunch of new top level domains and there are lots of uh there's a long list of things that you can have your website ending these days bear in mind though that again today the most professional and most popular looking one is the .com it's also the one that's likely going to be taken um, if, you, if, you're, if your business name is, for instance, uses understandable words, it's not an acronym, it doesn't have your first or last name, it's something like, like I said, like Daily Creative, it's taken. So, uh, so when you're thinking about URL, come up with multiple options and don't be heartbroken if something is already taken. URL is important, but it is not super critical these days because most people are not going to go to the browser and type dailycreative.io what they actually do is they google they open a google they google something something and either it comes up or not or even more popular they click on a link where they see it so whether it's in your email whether it's on your facebook ad whatever most people will come to your website by clicking something okay let's see okay so after all of that before you can start building your website you are going to need your look and feel nailed down so from branding perspective the minimum we are going to need is the logo in the corner uh, and it can be very simple it doesn't have to be anything super fancy you're going to need fonts decided colors decided photography style decided and if there's any specific design element that you're going to use so you can't build a website unless you have some of those things thought out before uh, and it, if you have some sort of design guideline built that of course helps and uh, then website design after you have your uh, look and feel nailed down you can start figuring out the page design the page layouts for your website so I've added here a couple of hand-drawn uh, thumbnail sketches so this is what actually professional designers web designers typically do uh, you start with just drawing little thumbnail sketches off each page. If you've listed your page, your content types, like I said, then you already know you're probably gonna have a blog, maybe you'll have a homepage for sure, or well, you will for sure have a homepage regardless because the page where users land that when they type your URL, that is going to be your homepage. So, but if you've listed your content types and your product types, you know whether you're gonna have, um, you know, what kind of landing pages you're going to have or about pages what kind of product pages uh, blog or other type of content sharing pages so you can draw a little thumbnails of um, kind of of each of those to start planning how are those web pages going to be you don't have to do this but it really at least I'm a visual person I think visually so it helps to see those little thumbnails to like understand that, oh, actually I need one, two, three, four, five images for this page. And oh, I need to figure out, cause there's gonna be a little blurb of text here, and then I'm gonna have a button here. So now I need to figure out what kind of title style, what kind of body copied or body text style, and what kind of like button style am I gonna use? So it helps you also not only just to like plan out things, but it also after you've done these little thumbnail sketches, it helps you sort of list all the different design settings that you need to do with your website now if you go with you know any of the platforms that i listed say wordpress or squarespace they will have a little 
section for design, like website design or whatever design kind of menu, where they'll ask for you, like, what is your headline typeface going to be or font? What is your headline color going to be like? So you could just also go and just enter it there and see what it looks like. But it's always good to plan a little bit ahead. This will also help you list some of the features. So you can kind of see like, oh, am I going to need some sort of email sign up and where is it going to be? So, you know, they say like, well, plan this half done. And this is definitely half of the work. If you uh, kind of get to this stage and you've done everything before, your website is literally almost half done. And then the last step is the execution. Now that you've done all of these, figured out all of these things, who is going to actually put the website together? Is it going to be you or are you going to hire? Is your husband going to help? Or your wife going to help? How is that going to be? And when are you going to do it? Um, do you have a big launch coming up? Do you have something other major thing that you need to uh, prepare your website for? So um, definitely plan the execution as well. Don't scramble like I did to get a couple of my websites done. Uh, over the years, I've gotten better, so I plan better. Um, so here's a good list for you. Uh, I will create, or there is this uh, checklist that I've broken down uh, really sort of um, in the detailed steps with some guiding questions uh, and you can uh, I'll post it here so you can download download it 